Welcome back to Mr. News Great Outdoors. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces today. Pardon the birds and the dogs you hear in the background, and maybe you'll hear some neighbors screaming at each other too. I'm sorry about all that. But today, we're going to be talking about how to draw Greek pottery. And as we look at these different pots and urns and stuff, we want to get some different ideas about shapes, about patterns, about different styles. And we can see some of these pots are taller or shorter, wider or narrower. Some of them have zigzaggy patterns. Some of them have dot patterns. There's all sorts of different kinds of things going on here. But what do we see in common? I've drawn out four different pots here as examples, and notice that they all have different kinds of geometric patterns. They all have symmetry, where the two different sides are the same. They all have some kind of handle, something you could hold on to. They all have this curvy shape to them, at least in some places. So there's a lot that we can look at and get ideas about things that are similar between these different pots. Now in this video, I'm gonna be demonstrating how to draw all four of these different pots right here. I'm gonna go through them one at a time. If there is just one that you wanna learn how to draw, you can look in the description down below and click the timestamp for each one. They're labeled by these letters, A, B, C, and D. Or if you want to follow along and draw all four of these, then by all means, go ahead and do that. I'm going to be drawing each one large on its own sheet of paper. If you're drawing all four, you can make them smaller like I did here. You could make them all lined up in a row. Totally up to you, your decision. So for pot A here, uh, we're going to start by thinking about size. If we're going to make this large to fill the whole page, well then we're going to want the top of it up here and the bottom of it down here. So uh, the top, that top shape, that starting shape is a trapezoid. But notice that that trapezoid is kind of upside down to what we normally think of a trapezoid being. Right? So it angles down as it comes in. And it's a wide trapezoid. And then the shape at the bottom is also a trapezoid, but notice it's a much smaller trapezoid. So we're gonna come down to the bottom and we're gonna make a trapezoid that is not quite as big as that one. Now, as we make the outline of the urn here, we're going to curve out from the bottom of this trapezoid to the top of that trapezoid. And notice that it's wider at the top and then gets smaller at the bottom. And then you just copy that same line on this side to make it symmetrical. And you notice that mine is not exactly perfectly symmetrical. This side doesn't bump out as far. Oh well, whatever, I'm gonna roll with it. It's not like I need to throw this away and start over. Next, we're gonna take a look at these handles here and notice they look kind of like curved horns, like ram horns. And to make that, we start with a sort of hook shape. And then at the end of that hook, we just make a larger hook wrapping around it. Next, we've got these wavy lines. So I'm going to start by making a nice smooth waves. I want them all to be kind of equal. You don't want to have like some big and some small waves. You want them to be kind of equal. Now the, this is important, parallel lines. Parallel lines always stay the same distance apart. So I don't want to make just another random wiggle here. I want to make my next wavy lines parallel to the first one. See how they stay the same distance apart the whole way down? And I can make three or four of these, however many you want. It's totally up to you. But take your time and make them parallel. Then, in these waves, underneath the waves and above the, the other waves, we're going to make little circles. So a circle inside of that wave, a circle inside of that wave, a circle inside of that wave, and a circle inside of that wave. Now, depending on how much space you have, I have enough space I could repeat that again down here if you want. If you've drawn it smaller, I didn't have enough space here to repeat it. But it's totally up to you. What I think I'm going to do is actually repeat it, but 
in the opposite direction. So where these curve up, the next one's gonna curve down. And then up, and then down, and then up, and then down. So it's kind of anti-parallel. It curves the opposite direction. But then I'm gonna make three lines that are parallel, staying the same distance apart. Staying the same distance apart. Or as close to as I can. They got a little closer together there, whatever. Again, you don't have to be perfect with this. And then circles inside of the little waves. That's fun. We can also add sort of straight stripes. So down here closer to the bottom, I think I'm gonna do just a smooth straight line and another parallel smooth straight line. I think I might do the same thing up at the top. We've already got a straight line at the uh, where this trapezoid meets the big shape of the urn. So I'm just gonna make another straight line directly under that. And maybe I'll make another band down here where there's two straight lines. You have fun with it. Make whatever kind of patterns you want. Maybe I'll make a row of circles up in the top here. It's really up to you. There's no wrong way to do it. As long as you're making patterns, you're making Greek pots. Well, there you have it. That is it for pot number A. Number A, listen to me, it's a letter, not a number. That is it for pot A. Let's move along to pot B. For the second pot, notice that it is much taller and skinnier. We start at the top with a trapezoid shape again, but that trapezoid is way tall. So I'm gonna start way at the top, make a nice wide line. And then probably around the middle of my page, I'm gonna make a small line. And that's gonna be my trapezoid from there to there and from there to there. Then, before I make this big round shape, I wanna notice the very bottom of the pot is a really wide rectangle or trapezoidy shape. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm just gonna make a really long skinny rectangle right at the bottom of the page. That's the bottom of the urn. And then my curved lines are gonna come down from the bottom of the trapezoid to the top of that rectangle. The handles here almost look like uh, the ears of a teddy bear. It's just two loops. So it's like an oval with an oval inside of it. And then again on this side, an oval with an oval inside of it. There we've got the basic shape of our pot here. Now we need to add some patterns. So the specific idea that I went with on this one was these parallel bands that have vertical overly line shapes in them. So to do that, I make a two close together parallel straight lines across. Then I skip a space and I make two parallel close together straight lines. And then in the space between those, I make basically a vertical stripe, but it's curvy at the top and bottom. And it's, it's almost like we're just drawing stripes across this, but instead of just straight lines, we're turning those into sort of ovaly shapes. And those go all the way across. Some people might say it almost looks like a railroad here. And there you just repeat that exact same thought wherever you want. Maybe I'll do that again up here. And anywhere else you want, you can add these parallel bands. So, just a couple of lines across right there, a couple of lines across up here, a couple of lines across up here, maybe a little bit down here. And if you wanna add rows of circles or wavy lines or anything else to it, you can. I think uh, maybe I'll do this same kind of thing in this area here. But notice how I'm kind of angling them since it curves in up there. And then I think the rest of this, I might just do some circles. So a row of circles at the bottom. And I think the circles work well with the ovals. If these had just been perfectly straight lines, then circles might not work as well with that. 
and maybe I will close it off at the top also with a row of circles. And I think this gives a nice balance between uh, space that is filled in with patterns and then empty negative spaces that don't have any patterns. There, I think we'll call that one done. That's pot B finished. Let's move on now to pot C. Again, we're starting with a trapezoid at the top. This one is kind of in between the first two. It's not, uh, it's not as tall as that one, and it's not as short as that one. But we'll start again way up at the top. And then in this time, instead of coming all the way down to the middle, we'll come not quite down to the middle. And we'll make the trapezoid there. Then coming all the way down to the bottom, notice that this has two layers to the base. There's like a trapezoid and then this oval at the bottom. So we're going to start uh, with that trapezoidy shape and make sure we give ourselves enough room to make the oval under it. Now that oval just comes from the edges of that trapezoid and wraps around like that underneath it. Next to the sides, we've got these curved sides to the pot. And that is as simple as just a curve from trapezoid to shining trapezoid. And try to make those parallel or as close to as you can. Again, if it's a little off, don't worry about it. And then we've got these handles, which are just a curved line from the top of the pot to the side of the pot. And then a second curved line, parallel or close to parallel with that. And then, then same thing on the other side. Now with this one here, we've got these zigzags at the top and bottom of the round part. And I like the way that those zigzags clash against the roundness of the pot. and against this wavy line I've got in the middle. So right in the middle, I'm gonna do a nice wavy line, just like before, we want that to be nice and even. We don't want like lots of different sized waves. We want a nice even wave. And then parallel to it, staying the same distance apart. And then above and below that, you notice I've got these curved stripes. Again, I think the curves against these zigzags really make an interesting juxtaposition. Up at the top, I just made a couple of narrow bands of parallel lines. Remember, parallel means lines that stay the same distance apart all the way. They're not getting farther apart. They're not getting closer together. And then another band of parallel lines down here. And there, we could call that done if we want. If you want to add more patterns to it, you can. It's totally up to you. That is pot C done. Let's move on now to pot D. I just realized I said pot D, and that sounds really too much like potty. Oh well, pot D is much, much shorter. So we're not gonna be going all the way to the top and bottom of our page. We're gonna keep it much closer to the center. So for the top trapezoid, notice how wide that is. We're not going to put it all the way at the top. We're going to come down a little bit. We're going to make a really wide trapezoid. But notice it's not, uh, it's not very tall. It's quite short. And then at the bottom, again, not all the way at the bottom of our page, but move up a little bit. We're going to make another trapezoid. This one is not quite as wide as that one. So... more like that. Now this one has the trickiest curves on the sides. It's really, you can think of it like an S curve. So I'm gonna start at this side and I'm gonna make it just like an S, except the top part of the S is really tiny and then the bottom part of the S is really big. So a really tiny top part of the S and then a really big bump out for the bottom of the S. And then the other side is a backwards S curve. So a really tiny part coming in, that goes in, that goes in, and then the, the big part goes out. Again, we have these hook-shaped 
horn-shaped handle things. I didn't leave myself much room for them, so mine are gonna be smaller here than they are there. Oops, oh well. I could have turned my paper sideways and had more space for that. But, you know, hindsight is 2020. If I were to draw this again, I would do it on a sideways paper. Next, across the top, between those top parts of the S curves, we're gonna make just one more stripe parallel to that trapezoid above it. And then we're gonna fill that trapezoid with a row of circles. Super simple. There is nothing difficult about anything we have done here. It's just patterns of repeated shapes and lines and trying to get things parallel where things stay the same distance apart and symmetrical where the two sides are the same. Down here in the middle of the pot, we're gonna do a zigzag. And again, just like we did with wavies in the other uh, pots here, we want our zigzag to be nice and even. We don't want our zigs, we don't want our zigzags to be different sizes. We want them all to be nice and even. And then a parallel zigzag. That means it's gonna stay the same distance apart the whole way across. We don't want our zigzags to cross each other and we don't want them to be different sizes. We want them to be exactly the same. Then, right above that, straight lines, and right below that, straight lines. Again, parallel. We're gonna do two lines, parallel. They stay the same distance apart, and they always go the same direction. They never cross each other. And same down here. Two parallel straight lines. There we go. If I want, I could go back and add another stripe down here with some more circles in it. I think that might just finish off balancing this picture because with just circles across the top and not at the bottom, it felt a little empty at the bottom. So adding those just kind of finishes it off. You can add whatever finishing touches you want. Here in this video, I have shown you today how to draw four different urns or pots with different patterns. And we gained inspiration from ancient Greek pottery. If you want, you could go and color those pots. You could use brown colors like they're actually made of clay, or you could use bright colors like you've painted it. It's totally up to you. Or you could leave them black and white, just, just drawings. I look forward to seeing how creative you can be with it.